for the playing of the national anthem. Councilmember Brown, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilmember. This evening, Council is appreciative to have Reverend Robert Darko, uh, pastor of Ebenezer United Methodist Church, to pray with us again. Pastor, welcome back to Council. Thank you for having me this afternoon. And we thank God for what he is doing in our midst. It is in um, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 3. The Lord told the prophet Ezekiel that he has chosen him um, as a watchman over the people of Israel. And so the leaders of this beautiful city, God have chosen um, the watchmen and watchwomen to watch over our city. So it is my prayer that God, the Almighty, who created heaven and earth, should give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I pray for our mayor, Mayor Ginto, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and the Spirit of God to be upon him and his family I pray for God's direction over his life so that he can do the work that we have elected him to do and all those who work for him. I also pray for our council president, President Harden, uh, that God should give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I pray for him and his family. I pray for God's hands to be upon him as always he preside over the meeting. I pray for all the council members and all the leaders of the city. I pray for all the security agencies, the police force, and all the institutions in, um, uh, in this city. I pray that the hand of God should be upon all of us so that we will live in peace and in justice and in the spirit of God. I pray that the almighty God should bless Ohio, especially Columbus, so that his spirit will take absolute control over everything that we do. May God bless America, bless Ohio, and all the leaders in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, thank you, amen. Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Clerk, just call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Hardin. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. 
Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to the journal? Seeing none, the journal is approved. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published by the, in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not this time. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go around the dais uh, for council members, uh, either resolutions or announcements, starting with Councilmember Bankston. Uh, thank you, Council President. Tonight I just have one announcement this evening, uh, and folks may have seen it. Uh, the Department of Technology in partnership with my office uh, will soon begin work on updating and redesigning uh, the city's website. Uh, we were really excited about this project and uh, it was our office's intent to make sure that we got feedback from the community. I want to commend uh, the Department of Technology uh, for their efforts in spearheading that. Um, there is, the, to kick off this process, there's a survey that is currently live uh, and has been put together to give the public an opportunity to weigh in on what they would like to see in terms of design, navigation, new features, and more. Uh, the survey takes less than 10 minutes to complete, uh, and you can access it via the city's homepage at www.columbus.gov, and also on my social media pages, as well as uh, other city channels. Um, so please take the time to fill out um, that survey. We want to get your feedback. Uh, our vendor uh, said to us that uh, a good marker for them is 350 comments. And in the first three days of it being open, we've had over 300 comments already. And so we're really um, proud of our residents, but uh, need to make sure that we get your feedback uh, by this Friday. So please go to www.columbus.gov to give us your feedback on the city's new website. And that's all I have. That's awesome. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Barroso de Padilla. Thank you, Council President. I have one announcement and one resolution uh, this evening. So my uh, announcement, we are hosting a public hearing this coming Tuesday, February 21st at 5.30 p.m. to discuss proposed legislation that will set a standard for pay equity. Women, especially women of color, tend to be paid substantially less than men, especially their white, male, non-Hispanic counterparts. For women who work full-time and year-round, the pay gap is at 16% right now, meaning that women make 84 cents for every dollar men make. And for black women, the figure is 64 cents, full-time, year-round workers. And for Latina women, the figure is staggering at just 46 cents on the dollar for every uh, dollar that their white male counterparts make. On average, women lose out over $400,000 over the course of a 40-year career due to the pay gap. And for black and Latina women, that figure is more like $1 million over the course of our career. This legislation will prohibit employers from asking an applicant's previous salary history. Women often work in industries with chronically low wages due to historical gender inequalities and biases. By relying on salary history, employers often consider other factors rather than a job applicant's qualifications and capability for the role. So this strategy creates equity in the salary negotiation process, and this is just a strategy, just one strategy that will help to narrow the gender pay gap and help to ensure that all people make more money to support themselves and their families. If you would like to submit public testimony or if you have questions, please reach out to my office, to Amaris Lemus at A-S-L-E-M-U-S -E at columbus.gov by noon on February 21st, so that's next Tuesday, a week from today. Um, now, as I read my resolution, if we could have our guests come down to the podium, come on down. Um, resolution 0030X 2023 to recognize the centennial of the United Way of Central Ohio in 2023 and to celebrate 100 years of innovation and impact that improves the lives of families and children by mobilizing the care, the caring power of the city of Columbus and Franklin County to raise more than $1.7 billion over the past 100 years to support their work and the families they serve. The United Way of Central Ohio has partnered with and brought together corporations, nonprofits, public and government entities, donors, advocates, and volunteers to collectively build a community in which everyone has the aspirations, resources, and opportunities to reach their fullest potential. The United Way not only helps helps resource organizations through dollars, but also through technical support, assistance, data sharing, and gathering, as well as helping to diversify our local nonprofit boards through professional development programs and helping to cultivate a culture of philanthropy through donor programs designed for women and black and brown people. I'm happy to introduce Dr. Lisa Cordes, President and CEO of the United Way of Central Ohio. Thank Take you, and thank you, Council Member, for this honor, and to all of Council. My colleagues and I are proud to be here. 
this evening. Um, as you heard in the proclamation, United Way of Central Ohio began as the Columbus Community Fund in 1923. We're proud to be a trusted partner <coughs> with deep roots in the community. In the past 100 years, we've brought together individuals and organizations across Central Ohio, raising and investing $1.7 billion to strengthen families and build a more equitable home for everyone. While it's impossible to estimate how many people have been impacted by these investments and the work of United Way over the century, we are certain we have touched the lives of millions of individuals and children. We are incredibly grateful for the tireless dedication of the numerous volunteers, donors, and community leaders and partners who have worked alongside us. Our accomplishments were, wait, were made by them. Looking back on our history, I'm proud that our United Way has been a leader in creating innovation, innovative solutions to community issues around poverty, access to education, food insecurity, and more. Through many challenging periods in history, we've, bought, we've brought Central Ohio together around a common vision to help our neighbors thrive and for all children to be able to reach their full potential. We've been a leader in other areas as well. We spoke out against racial discrimination and segregation back in 1956 with the expectation that our member agencies adopt similar policies. In 1972, we selected Nancy Jeffrey as our campaign chair, the first woman in the country, we have more than 1,100 United Ways in our country, to lead a campaign of over $1.5 million. And we established Pride Council in 2010, the nation's first United Way group for LGBTQ supporters. United Way of Central Ohio's legacy over these 100 years will inspire and guide the next 100 years of impact. Thank you for celebrating our centennial and joining us as we look forward to working together because we'll all make it through the next 100 years, right, <laughs> together. <laughs> We're so proud to be in partnership with the city. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Don't go anywhere, Dr. Curtis. Um, I'd like to open it up to my colleagues for any questions, comments, anything you'd like to share. I just want to also just acknowledge that even through the pandemic, like many of our nonprofits, I think the United Way has found a way to stay nimble, to um, still meet community need. Um, I served on many United Way boards and committees. Uh, it helped me as a mom decide where I wanted to think about where I wanted to send my daughter to child, early childhood um, care. And um, I appreciate all the work that you all have done, and the decisions that you have made to think about how you further impact and invest in our communities and especially help our nonprofit folks um, and really guide them through the process of um, helping ensure that they are strong organizations. So thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege. Thank so you. I'm going to oh, pass this, okay. and i got to give you this resolution. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. OK, so with that, um, I would now move for adoption by voice. Second. Look, please call the roll by voice. Mr. Bankston. Abstain. Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Faber. Yes. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Hart. Yes. Uh, it's passed. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Brown. Nothing this evening, sir. Thank you, sir. Councilmember Dorrance. Councilmember Faber. Thank you, Council President Harden. Uh, this year's Black History Month theme is Black Resistance, Building Bridges and Navigating Barriers. This theme explores how Black Americans have resisted historic and ongoing oppression. Today, I would like to highlight Alice Coachman, who, perfe who perfectly, who perfectly, 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 don't, get, don't judge me guys, it's been a long day. <laughs> Embodies black resistance. Alice Coachman was the first black woman from any country to win a gold medal at the Olympics. Growing up in the segregated South, she was discouraged by society and her father from playing sports and instead was prompted to be ladylike. Nonetheless, she continued to train despite not having access to equal training facilities and eventually caught the attention of the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. There, she was able to excel in track and field and won the national title in the high jump event each year from 1939 to 1948. In 1948, she entered the Olympics and shattered the high jump record by clearing the five feet, six, five feet six, one eighth inch bar, earning her the gold award. 
She later became inducted into nine halls of fame and served as an inspiration for black female athletes after her. Alice Coachman's story paved the way for so many black athletes and Olympians that came after her. Uh, as a reminder, uh, black history is American history, and so I continue to encourage everyone to explore uh, the ways in which black Americans continue to contribute to uh, the broader American society. With that, I would like to also invite you all to join us this Friday, February 17th at 9.30 a.m. as we host our annual Black History Month celebration and Poindexter Awards ceremony as we celebrate and honor our history makers. This year, we are extremely excited to announce that our keynote speaker is a woman that truly needs no introduction, a history maker and a change maker who fights on behalf of each and every one of us every single day in DC, our Congresswoman, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. Uh, so with that, if you're unable to join us in person, uh, you, it will be streaming live on YouTube and CTV as well. And uh, we look forward for that exciting event this upcoming Friday. Thank you for making that announcement. And certainly uh, invite folks to join us. Councilman Remy. Thank you very much, Council President Harden. Today I have an announcement to um, promote the Keep Columbus Beautiful. They're hosting their annual Kick Butt Columbus event on Saturday, March 11th from 9 a.m. to noon to help stomp out litter along city ramps. Hundreds of volunteers will work to pick up litter from city ramps all around the city. If you or your organization are interested in joining the first big cleanup event of the year, please go to columbus.gov to learn more or email Keep Columbus Beautiful at Columbus.gov. That's all I have this evening. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, I don't have any announcements, so are there any uh, uh, comments from the City Attorney's Office, Clerk's Office, or uh, seeing none then? Uh, are there any uh, requests by members of Council for the removal of an ordinance or, or resolution from the consent portion of the agenda? Uh, seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of third day legislation for tonight's agenda. Is there a second? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosity, Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of third day legislation? Economic Development Committee, Ordinance 324-2023. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinance 432-2023. Recreation and Parks Committee, Ordinance 3520-2022. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 159, 195, 199, 235, 237, 256, 264, 269, 297, 298, 318-2023 and Finance Committee Ordinance 459-2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The following ordinances appear on our agenda as consent actions. Will the clerk now read those into the record? Resolutions of Expression 29X and 33X-2023, Economic Development Committee Ordinance 232, 236, 262, 265, 266-2023, Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 272 and 335-2023, Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinance 3518 and 3519-2022, Education Committee Ordinance 294-2023, Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 156, 187, 221, 385-2023, Housing Committee Ordinances 215, 326, 327, 405-2023, Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee Ordinances 242 and 380-2023, Public Safety Committee Ordinance 301-2023, Administration Committee Ordinances 239, 352-2023, Finance Committee, Ordinances 125, 220, 344, 377, 387, and 418-2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have two speakers on the consent portion of the agenda. The first speaker to come before council is uh, Jillian Dyer, speaking on uh, Safety Ordinance 0301. Ms. Dyer, welcome to council. Um, I am here to respectfully oppose um, Ordinance 301-2023. Uh, it's an expansion of ShotSpotter. Um, I just came from 
the press conference for Michael Cleveland's family, and it's, I don't know when this ends, uh, but we have a problem in Columbus with the police uh, terrorizing um, citizens instead of helping or protecting them. Um, they already have a bigger budget than education, housing, parks, traffic management, and climate initiatives combined, um, all things that could actually help improve public safety. Um, and there are a lot of things being purchased and managed for police outside of the larger budget that is approved for the year, which creates a lack of transparency and a strong sense of mistrust and suspicion um, for other city initiatives as well. And it's, it's frustrating for a lot of people to be told that there's no money for other public safety initiatives like safe infrastructure, schools, and housing when the police have such a large budget. Um, and this particular piece of technology does not reduce or prevent crime and violence according to their own um, contracts that they give to cities. And in addition to the cost of the technology itself, um, it does also raise operating costs for police departments. Um, there is a, a couple of studies that were referenced in Police Chief Magazine. Um, there was one from St. Louis where they said the implementation of gun detection, gunshot detection technology leads to a substantial increase in shots fired calls, but does not lead to more actionable evidence. So we have more police responded, um, responding to more incidents, but they can't do anything about them. They're also arriving um, already on edge and suspicious, um, which can and has been shown to increase um, violent behavior um, or fearful behavior from the police and to regard anybody uh, on the scene as a potential suspect, regardless of whether or not they know if it was an actual gunshot or a car backfiring. Um, we also have seen that shot spotter has uh, refused to cooperate in court cases um, unless they are giving over recordings of people's conversations in neighborhoods. Um, so they, uh, they believe that was a study in Chicago and I can give that to your assistant if yeah. you would like. Um, so to me, this just looks like increased surveillance um, when what we need is, is safer streets and safer neighborhoods and better housing and education for all of our citizens. All I have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dyer. And what I actually do appreciate, appreciate is when you come, you, also, you bring supporting uh, documents. So if you would share those with us, I think it helps uh, inform the conversation and allows us to give back responses uh, to some of the things that you raised. So if you would share uh, any information that you spoke about tonight, I, that, I'd be grateful. Um, do you have any questions or comments from Ms. Dyer? We have another speaker on this ordinance as well, and I was going to ask the director to speak on this ordinance. Uh, is that okay with council members? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Dyer. Uh, the, the next speaker uh, to come uh, before council is uh, Zorka Abit, uh, and she's speaking uh, on ordinance 0301 as well. Ms. Zorka, are you with us on WebEx? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, thank you so much for having me at this uh, hearing. I'm sorry I could not join in person. This is Zerka Abed, founder and executive director of my project USA. I have been working in Wedgwood community since 2015 and have uh, played critical role in addressing the gun violence and gang violence throughout these years and have worked with hundreds of children and families who live there and currently very much involved again after the pandemic on a weekly basis. We are doing different programs and uh, have brought the uh, police officers back as we used to and it really helped us in the in the past so i am in very much favor of this short spotters uh, um, money allocation that you are uh, proposing to have for the wedgwood community uh, we just recently uh, trained the entire community on see something say something campaign just two weeks ago i had this event with the cleanup with cops and we went to buildings to buildings and we did a lot of work with youth uh, i I am working with the, at seven individuals right now that we are creating very first resident council, which will be working closely with police officers. And I am very much appreciative of uh, uh, Chief Brian.
client and assistant chief parts for their role as they are working hand in hand with us right now. Uh, I, I've been with working with the police officers in Wedgwood who are very involved and very compassionate. And we have seen our uh, the difference in the, in the community because of this direct involvement and friendly uh, work that we are doing. And I would definitely support anything that would support our police officers because I have been working with them. I've seen the results myself as a mother, as a community member and organizer, as a nonprofit manager. And at the same time, I would also believe that this short spotters will add the confidence of my new members of resident council and entire community because that shows that city of Columbus cares for these children. This will add forty-four thousand dollars to the to the budget, and that forty-four thousand will resume the confidence and grow the confidence and self-esteem of so many children. We know, and I'm very much aware of police brutality and other cases throughout the country. This is nothing new, but in Wedge we have shown and we have proven a different model and we want to sustain it. We would love for that to happen in other communities also. So I would strongly recommend that the uh, city council support this, uh, this budget, approve it, and uh, inshallah we can do more work together as we have been doing and producing the results uh, for the Pedgewood community and children. Uh, there are about 2,000 children in this, that neighborhood and they are positively impacted by any work that we do together as their community and that's what made a big difference for them. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Ms. Zerka. Are there any questions or comments for uh, Ms. Zerka uh, regarding this ordinance? Well, at this time, I want to turn it over to the director to speak on this ordinance, what it is, and if you had any specific responses to uh, what Ms. Dyer, uh, some of the concerns Ms. Dyer raised. Well, good evening. Thank you, Council President, Council Members. Um, as some of you are well aware, ShotSpotter is a gunfire de detection technology and is another valuable tool law enforcement utilizes in the fight against gun violence and violent crimes. The city has installed this technology in four neighborhoods, and this proposal would expand the current coverage area by approximately 0.64 square miles in the Wedgwood Village area. And this is part of a comprehensive plan to combat violent crime in the Wedgwood Village complex, which also includes additional patrols and cameras. So it's just one of the tools in the toolbox. And kind of some of the successes we've seen or how it works is as gunfire is detected by sensors, a notification is sent directly to neighborhood patrol officers. It pinpoints the specific location which the gunfire originated and the technology allows officers to respond to gunfire sometimes before 911 is called and even without calls to 911. It's enabled officers to locate victims and render aid more quickly and it helps us to get violent offenders off the street. Uh, additionally, on all shot spotter alerts, either the patrol officers in that zone or the community response teams will respond to, to that area, collect the shell casings, and submit them for what's called NIBIN comparison. And NIBIN is the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network that's managed by the ATF. So what this allows for is the capture and compar comparison of ballistic evidence to aid in solving and preventing violent crimes involving firearms. And we've you know, been able to uh, identify violent offenders through this and also connect multiple cases w where the same firearm is used. Uh, so I would say, I mean, it, it's a valuable tool. It's only one of the tools uh, in the toolbox. And also ShotSpotter does do um, a lot of uh, analysis to look for false positives, false negatives, and those type of things. And we do track that information. Uh, and it is a very low number uh, of those instances. Director, uh, just, just for, for my knowledge, can you tell me how we choose a location for, uh, uh, for Spot Shotter? And I guess more specifically, is there community advocacy involved in you know, where the locations are? Or are you following uh, other statistics or data that? that well, yeah, it's my understanding. It's, it's been, uh, Shot Spotter has been utilized. It was, I think, first co contracted in 2018, and it's been in place starting in 2019 in the uh, Hilltop, Linden, and Southside areas, and then was also added to the Near East Side in 2021. Um, that's a little bit before my time, but I believe the locations were selected based on, you know, what were felt to be the, the most 
I don't want to say violent areas, but areas that needed this type of assistance. Uh, and it's looked at, you know, yearly to look if it needs to be expanded or contracted or those type of things. Thank you. Uh, to my colleagues, are there any questions or comments uh, on this ordinance to the director or in general? Okay. Well, well, we appreciate it. I, I, I would just say that um, in my conversations with community members, this has been something that folks have advocated for in certain areas, but I think the oversight and specifically some of the questions uh, we have around just new technology when we're talking about policing needs, the questions are fair um, as more and more technologies are coming um, that, that are to keep us safe that we just got to understand what they are, what their capabilities are, um, and, and how we are actually using them. Because uh, there was one thing that Ms. Dyer hit on that, uh, do we listen to people's conversations with Sp Spot Shotter? And, and that is like, a, I think a, a fair question that would concern folks if that's what we were doing. And I'm assuming the answer is no. Oh, I'm sorry, what was the last part? The, the question is, because Ms. Dyer raised that in some communities they have used the spot shotter to listen to folks' conversation, and I'm assuming that we do not do that. Yeah, I, I mean, I can follow up on that and make sure that that happens. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions or comments in the rest of the or, uh, consent agenda? Seeing none, I move for passage by voice. Clerk, please call the roll by voice. Mr. Bankston. Yes, with the exception of Ordinance 236-2023, from which I'm abstaining. Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Favor. Yes. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Hart. Yes, ordinances are passed. We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30-day uh, postponed and emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Rosa de Padilla. Councilmember, the floor is yours. I have uh, two resolutions. Uh, two pieces of legislation today. Uh, 0285 2023 to authorize the city attorney to file complaints in order to immediately appropriate and accept the remaining fee simple and lesser real estate necessary to timely complete the Celebrate One Sidewalks project to authorize the expenditure of up to $300,000. This is part of the Celebrate One Sidewalks project with which consists of pedestrian improvements on the Spring Mount Avenue and Walsh Avenue. There will be construction of a sidewalk in addition to curb ramps, drive approaches, curb, retaining walls, and many include stormwater drainage improvements in select areas. This ordinance will allow the city attorney to acquire real estate located in the vicinity of Spring Mount Avenue and Walsh Avenue. And I'm sorry, I said 300,000, I meant 300. Mm. <laughs> 300, not 300,000. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. So I wanted to provide a little context for this next piece. The Division of Infrastructure Management plans for and maintains the city's public right-of-way infrastructure. This includes planning for capital improvements and managing bridges and pavement programs, right-of-way permits, and GIS applications. Additionally, the division provides vital services such as snow and ice control, pothole repair, street sweeping, and roadside mowing. So Ordinance 03-22-23 authorizes the annual appropriation of monies within the Municipal Motor Vehicle License Tax Fund, Fund 2266, for the Divisions of Infrastructure Management and Traffic Management. This permissive tax has been levied by the City of Columbus since 1987. This money is used for operating expenses consistent with the 2023 budget. The amount being appropriated within this ordinance is $10,250,000. Proposed expenditures are estimates and are subject to change. Where appropriate, expenditure ordinances will be submitted to City Council for approval to procure these commodities and equipment. Do any of my colleagues have questions or comments? <clears throat> Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Pass. 
Thank you, Council President. That's all I have on my committees this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. I skipped uh, our first committee, and I apologize for that. Um, the next committee to go uh, before Council is the Technology Committee, chaired by Councilmember Bankston. Councilmember, the floor is now yours. Thank you, uh, President Harden. This is very important cybersecurity stuff, so I'm glad you doubled back to me. Um, tonight in Technology Committee, for second reading, we have 0260-2023. Uh, to authorize the Director of the Department of Technology to enter into a contract with RSM US LLP, registered as McGlarty LLP for IT and cybersecurity products and services, and to authorize the expenditure of up to $2,500,000. Uh, this legislation uh, provides IT and cybersecurity products and services for a period of three years uh, from the date of a confirmed purchase order at a cost not to exceed $2,500,000. This IT and cybersecurity product and service contract will provide the city with cybersecurity capabilities necessary to identify, prioritize, and mitigate a wide range of risks related to the city's use of IT. The contract will be used to assess current practices against best practices to identify and prioritize gaps that introduce cyber, cyber risk and to develop and execute strategies, roadmaps, and corrective action plans for managing risks. Uh, the contract will also provide a software solution to capture project data and manage ongoing activities necessary to reduce risk and comply with current mandates and emergency emerging uh, requirements. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hart. And that is all I have in my committee this evening. Thank you, Council President. Uh, this evening in Recreation and Parks, I have Ordinance 0102 2023 to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into a contract with Facemeyer and Ascension Construction Solutions for the Ulrey Warner Parkland Improvements Project to authorize the appropriation of $6,049,629.75 within the Albany Crossing TIF Fund to authorize the appropriation of $509,750.50 within the Upper Albany West TIF Fund, to authorize the appropriation of $2,767,398.23 within the Hamilton Central College TIF Fund, to authorize the appropriation of $546,831.94 within the Recreation and Parks Permanent Improvement Fund, to authorize the transfer of $6,342,181.03 within the Albany Crossing TIF Fund, to authorize the transfer of $738,543.74 within the Upper Albany West TIF Fund, to authorize the transfer of $2,767,398.23 within the Hamilton Central College TIF Fund, to authorize the transfer of 875000 within the Recreation and Parks Permanent Improvement Fund, to authorize the amendment of 2022 Capital Improvements Budget, to authorize the expenditure of $10,723,123 from the Albany Crossings TIF Fund, Upper Albany West TIF Fund, Hamilton Central College TIF Fund, and the Recreation and Parks Permanent Improvement Fund, and to declare an emergency. This ordinance will enable the Recreation and Parks Department to complete construction of a 53-acre park in the city's far northeast area of the Rocky Fork Black Lake community. The design of the park began in 2020 and was completed in November 2022. There was an extensive community input during the design process via an open house direct stakeholder conversations with civic associations and with over 500 written comments received from the project website. Improvements for this park project include athletic fields, walking paths, natural play spaces, a four-season reservable pavilion, hard courts for pickleball, and futsal, which I did not know what the heck that was, uh, parking areas, utility services, forest preservation, and expansion, and a four-path connection to the surrounding communities. To complete this construction of this park, there was an open bidding process in accordance with the city code section 329 for both the construction portion and the construction management and inspection portion of this project. 
Director Reese is here and she can provide insight into what steps were taken in regards to the vendor selection process and maybe explain what food soul means. Uh, and uh, we'll, I'll let her take it over from here. Director Reese. Thank you so much, President Harden, Chair Brown, and Council members. Uh, futsal is very similar to soccer. Soccer? Yes, sir. Why and did so we say therefore, soccer? Uh, <laughs> two different sports, two different sports, but very okay. similar, smaller court, uh, or I would say smaller pl playing areas. So uh, very similar, but uh, different rules. So thank you. Different rules. Yes, sir. We have different rules for council too, so it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so the, um, the site was acquired in 2013 for a uh, future community park. Uh, one of the things that we did to make sure that we were uh, in compliance, and that is work with the Office of Diversity and Inclusion uh, for the MBE goals. Um, those goals were set at 20%. Uh, we had two vendors to come in with a bid. Out of those two vendors, the subcontractor came in at 21% MBE. Um, so we are meeting the ODI goals. Uh, we are ready to get started on this park. Uh, we think it is an asset as this community has grown uh, to be one of the largest here in the city of Columbus. And thank you, Chair Brown. Do my colleagues have any questions? You guys all knew what futsal was, right? I, I'm sure Rob knew what that was. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pardon me, sir? Please. I just wanted to just commend Director Reese and the Department uh, of Recreation and Parks continuously on all the projects that we've seen coming forward. You guys have been a leader in the construction space on the diversity, equity, and inclusion side of things. And so I really want to just highlight that and underscore that 21% goal. Uh, and as you all know, you've heard me say it, it's about intentionality. So thank you for being intentional. Thank you to Director Jenkins and your team for working uh, with Director Reese and excited about this new park uh, that will be coming to District 5. And so excited for this investment on that side of town and for those folks um, past 270. So thank you for your leadership. If there are no additional questions, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Burroughs, Adi Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Also this evening we have uh, Ordinance 0369-2023 to authorize the city attorney to file complaints in order to immediately appropriate and accept the remaining fee, simple and lesser real estate necessary to timely complete the FRA Souter Avenue Trail Project to authorize the expenditure of $107,655 and to declare an emergency. Again, Director Reese, do you have any additional comments with regard to the FRA Souter Avenue Trail project? Thank you once again, President Harden, Chair Brown. Um, this is working directly with Finance uh, Department on real estate. Uh, this would acquire two pieces of property where we would be able to go in and continue the trail usage. Um, that trail would improve or repair certain portions of the public right-of-way um, of West Broad Street to the Scioto Trail at Dublin Road. So thank you, Chairman. If there are no questions from my colleagues, I move for passage. Thanks. Clerk, please call the row. Bangston, Perosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. That's all we have this evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next committee to come before council is the Public Utilities Committee, chaired by Councilmember Dorans. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. First, we have Ordinance 3581-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Util Utilities to enter into a construction contract for the Big Walnut Sanitary Trunk Extension Phase 2 project with Abiyash Corporation to authorize the appropriation of an expenditure of up to $81,491. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. $81,491,778 from the Ohio Water Development Loan Fund to authorize expenditure of up to $2,000 from the Sanitary uh, Bond Fund to amend the 2022 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize a transfer and cash and appropriation within the Sanitary Bond Fund and declared emergency. Uh, this project is an extension of the Big, Big Walnut Sanitary Trunk Sewer uh, north of Central College Road and east of Hoover Reservoir. It will provide sanitary sewer service for the rapidly developing area between the Hoover Reservoir and New Albany, north of State Route 161. Uh, emergency designation is requested at this time so that project timelines and the Ohio Water Development Authority's funding schedules can meet. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. 
Thanks. Next, we have Ordinance 0006-2023 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to enter a construction contract for the HCWP Hydrochloride Disinfectant Project with Kenmore Construction Company to authorize the appropriation and transfer of up to uh, $31,485,850 from the Ohio Water Development Loan Fund to authorize the transfer of funds and appropriation within the Water Bond Fund to authorize expenditure of up to $2,000 within the water, bo water Bond Fund to amend and to amend the 2022 capital improvement budget and declare an emergency. Uh, the purpose of this project is to convert the hapcrimine water plant disinfection process from chlor chlorine gas to liquid so sodium chlor chlorinate. Uh, this will address the current risks associated with chlorine gas-based system while providing safer storage and handling system for plant staff. Uh, the potential threat of an accident or an, uh, intentional release of chlorine gas will be mitigated um, with this project. Similar to our previous ordinance, emergency designations requested this time to the project timelines can meet the funding schedules. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0013-2023 to amend Ordinance 3469-2022 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to execute water and sewer service agreements for the Rickenbacker Lockbourne service area with the City of Columbus, Franklin County, Ohio, and the Village of Lockbourne, and declared an emergency. Uh, this legislation amends the existing water and sewer service agreements in the Rickenbacker Lockbourne service area with the City of Columbus, Franklin County, and Village of Lockbourne to include additional acres within the service area related to new economic development agreement that is being entered into between the City of Columbus and the Village of Lockbourne. Um, the amendments will align with the revenue um, and equity sharing area established in the economic development agreement. A emergency action is being requested in order to align the timing of the execution of the economic development agreement with the water and sewer sanitary service agreements. Um, and my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Sure. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next committee to come before council is the Environment Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilman Remy. Councilman, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Council President Hardin. I have one ordinance this evening in the Environment Committee, which is Ordinance 343-2023, to provide funding for a community relations coordinator with the Department of Public Services Refuse Division to authorize the appropriation and transfer of 85000 within the general fund. I'm really excited about this piece of legislation. This is an opportunity to help support and further the goals of Keep Columbus Beautiful, as well as um, help with our Cleaner Columbus initiatives to keep our streets safe and um, clean. And so, um, as we've mentioned in the past, our first big event this year um, beyond um, Kick Butt Columbus will be our annual cleanup, Cleaner Columbus's annual cleanup on April 1st. It's no, litter is no joke. And that will be um, at Wolf Park from 9 to noon. But this will help support those types of programs and more, as well as assist with the growing demands of Keep Columbus Beautiful. So, really excited um, that we're able to help with the funding on this and look forward to many years to come. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues this evening? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Stin Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you very much. That is all I have this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next committee to come, uh, to come before council is the Finance Committee, and I chair that committee. And today in Finance, we have four ordinances on second reading. Three of them are related to the 2023 city operating budget. Uh, this is a massive uh, package of investments um, in our future of, the, at our, of our city. I want to thank Mayor Ginther and the administration for working with council to propose a strong, balanced budget that addresses many of the key issues that our community faces. As the legislative body, our job is to amend and approve the final budget. Last week, council unveiled a package of over $23 million in budget amendments to address council's strategic priority. Uh, priorities. These included uh, strengthening safe and healthy neighborhoods, increasing access to affordable, high quality housing, and investing in workforce development. Additionally, Council was allocating $1 million to the Rainy Day Fund, $2.5 million to the Columbus Promise Program, and millions more to support youth. These amendments address what we have heard from residents during our public hearings and during our community engagement. I'd also like to thank uh, the finance director, uh, Ms. Kathy Owens, 
uh, and her team, LRO Director Matt Erickson, um, for working with all of our, my colleagues um, and, and advancing their priorities. Certainly my, my uh, count, fellow council members and their teams for putting forward uh, amazing projects and amazing partnerships to move the city forward. And all the community advocates who share their input, their ideas, and hopefully see themselves reflected in our budget amendments. The budget we have prepared for tonight would not be possible with every, without everyone's effort. Um, I'd now like to just uh, open it up to council members. I don't know if anybody wanted to hit on anything that they uh, advanced or any comments on the budget in general. Seeing none, we can jump right in. Um, the first ordinance is zero, the first ordinance is 2936-2022, and it's to make appropriations for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2023, for each of several object classes for which the City of Columbus has to provide from the monies known to be in the treasury of said City of Columbus. In the fund known as the General Fund, during the said 12 months from the collection of all taxes and from other sources of revenue, the amount of $1,162,000,000, nine hundred and forty one dollars and thirty six cents i move for passage on ordinance twenty nine thirty six twenty twenty two clerk please call the roll bangston barosa de padilla brown doran's favor remy president harden thank you madam clerk next is ordinance twenty nine thirty seven twenty twenty two is to make appropriations and transfers for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2023, for other funds for various divisions, to authorize the city auditor to make transfers as may be necessary and to declare an emergency. I move for passage on ordinance 2937-2022. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you. The next ordinance is uh, ordinance 29. 38-2022 and is to make appropriations for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2023 for selected other funds for various divisions to authorize the city auditor to make transfers as may be necessary and to declare an emergency. I move for passage of ordinance 2938-2022. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Borough City, Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Ordinance is passed. And the final item in the Finance Committee today is Ordinance 0238-2023, and is to amend the cap 2022 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the transfer of funds and appropriation within the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into a construction contract with Miles McClellan Construction Company for the refuse station at 1550 Georgesville Road, Phase 1 project, to authorize the expenditure of up to $9,360,000 $63,439.97 from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund for the project and to declare an emergency. This ordinance will allow for the building of a refuge collection center on Georgesville Road. Uh, an emergency designation is requested due to the importance of advancing this project in a timely manner. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for uh, passage of Ordinance 0238. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, President Harden. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, that concludes the uh, Finance Committee's agenda for tonight. I'll now move to the Rules and Reference Committee where there is one ordinance uh, on second reading. It's Ordinance 0446-2023, and it's to approve rules and regulations promulgated by the Director of the Department of Finance and Management regarding the purchase of food, beverages, and related costs to declare them uh, to be for a public purpose and to declare an emergency. I want to turn it over to Deputy Director Chris Long from the Department of Finance to talk more about this uh, ordinance and explain it to council in the community. Good evening, President Harden, President Pro Tem Dorans, and members of council. Yes, this ordinance is actually a companion piece or a follow-on ordinance to Ordinance 3197-2022, which was passed by council last December, and it authorizes the purchase of food, beverages, and other related costs for public purpose only. And so the purpose of this ordinance is to, uh, per a requirement of Ordinance 3197, is establish formal policies and procedures around the purchase of food and beverages uh, for city use. So this ordinance seeks specific authority to implement these policies and procedures. Um, and the way the procedures will work is city departments will be required to submit information and justification to the finance department. And this information will be uh, outlining the nature and the public purpose of the event for which food and beverages are being requested. 
it will also have to outline the cost of the event and will also have to outline that the cost did not exceed the maximum per diem cost as established by the Federal General Services Administration. If those key elements are met, the finance department will approve such purchase and that purchase will move to the city auditor's office for certification. I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. Thank you, uh, Deputy Director Long. Are there any questions or comments for the director on this new policy? Seeing none, uh, the, uh, ma'am, move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Seeing uh, no further business, uh, I will say that there will be no council uh, meeting on Monday, February 20th, next Monday, in observance of President's Day. So the next regular meeting of City Council will be Monday, February 27th. Seeing no further business coming for council, is there a motion to adjourn? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Meeting is adjourned. We have two non agenda speakers this evening uh, for council. The first.
Auditor Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, President Hart. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa Di Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Hardin. Are there any uh, additions or corrections to the journal? Hearing none, the journal is approved. We will now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Dem Dorans chairs that committee. All members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Before beginning tonight's zoning agenda, allow me to briefly explain our current rules pertaining to speaking before Council and rezonings and variances. We only hear sta staff presentations for ordinances that have disapproval from a recommending body or if we have a public speaker signed up to speak against an ordinance. Uh, this evening, we have zero public speakers. Um, all speakers on a Council variance, including city staff, area commissioners, the applicants, and members of the public will be sworn in before they give testimony. Representatives of the area commission and applicants are always able to speak on an ordinance and do not need to fill out a speaker slip. Um, uh, on the advice of the city attorney's office, I will now swear in city staff. Please stand and raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear or affirm that, that uh, the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth and nothing but the truth as you shall answer under painful penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. Please let the record reflect that Kelsey Preby from the Department of Building and Zoning Services has been sworn in. <clears throat> First, we have Ordinance 0345 2023 to rezone 7400 uh, Forder Road, being 2.6 plus acres located in the northeast corner of Forder Road and New Albany Road from LC4 Limited Commercial District to LC4 Limited Commercial District. Uh, the applicant is Tim Donut, US Limited Inc., care of Jeff Brown, attorney. Proposed use is a commercial development. City Department recommendation is approval. The Development Commission recommendation is approval. Northland Community Council recommendation is also approval. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0360 2023 to rezone 2937 Courtright Road, being 4.14 plus acres located on the west side of Courtright Road, 220 plus feet of the Askins Road uh, North Terminus from R Rural District to LAR3 Limited Apartment Residential District and PUD8 Plan Unit Development District. Uh, the applicant is Hope and Heart Property Solutions, care of Jeff Brown Attorney. Proposed use is a single unit and multi unit residential development. C's Department recommendation is approval. Development Commission's recommendation is also approval. The Mid East Area Commission's recommendation is also approval. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bangston, Barosa de Padilla, <clears throat> Brown, Torrance, Faber, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 1672-2020 um, to rezone, 2022, I'm sorry, uh, to rezone 3163 South High Street being 0.50 plus acre located in the west side of South High Street, uh, 1,530 plus feet south of uh, Southgate Drive from R2 Residential District to C3 Commercial District. Uh, the applicant is Vicki Rathburn. Proposed use of commercial development. Safe Department recommendations approval. The Development Commission recommendation is approval. And Far South, far, far south Area Commission recommendation is also approval. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, President Horton. Pass. Thank you. We now move in the Council of Variances. Uh, first, we have Ordinance 0336 2023. Um, to grant a variance provisions of sections 3333.02 AR12, ARLD, and AR1 apartment residential district use, 3312.49 MIM number of parking spaces required, 3333.09 area requirements, and 3333.23 AC minimum side yard permitted the Columbus City Coast to the property located at 86 North Yale Avenue to permit a two unit dwelling with reduced development standards in the AR1 apartment residential district and repeal ordinance number 3074. 2021 passed on December 6th of 2021. Uh, the applicant is New City Homes LLC, care of Andrew Wapner. Um, the proposed use of a two-unit two unit, uh, development city department recommendation is approval. The Franklinton Area Commission recommendation is also approval. Uh, do my colleagues some questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Thank you. I next move to adopt the fines of staffs, the fines of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harton. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Harton. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have ordinance 0346 2023. 
uh, to grant a variance provisions of section 3333.35H private garage, 3333.15 basic computing area, 3333.22 maximum side yard required, 3333.23 minimum side yard permitted, and 3333.35FG private garage the Columbus City Coast, the property located at 937 Denison Avenue to permit a habitable space above a detached garage with reduced development standards in the L A A L R D apartment residential district. Um, the applicant is David, David Maddox, the Alcaris Group, proposed use of a habitable space above a garage. City's apartment recommendation is approval. The Victorian Village uh, Commission's recommendation is also approval. I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Like we saw the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor. Remy, President Harden. Uh, accept it. Thank you. And next move to adopt the fines of staff, so the fines of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor. Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. And next move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Doran's favor. Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0348 2023 to grant advance provisions of Section 3332.037 uh, R2F Residential District, 3361.02 CPD uh, permitted uses, and Section 3361.03 Development Plan of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 494 St. Clair Avenue to permit a multi unit residential development in the CPD Commercial Plan Development District and the R2F Residential District. The applicant is National Church Residences, uh, care of Matthew um, Berline, attorney, proposed use as a multi-unit residential development. City's Department recommendation is approval. The Erie Sierra Commission's recommendation is also approval. Uh, I first move to accept the entire staff report and do evidence as an exhibit by voice. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. By voice. Bankston. Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Barosa de Padilla. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Favor. Abstain. Mr. Remy. Yes. President Harden. Yes. Accept it. Thank you. I next move to adopt the fines of staff, the fines of council by voice. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston? Yes. Ms. Barosa de Padilla? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Favor? Abstain. Mr. Remy? Yes. President Harden? Yes, adopt it. Um, adopt it. Thank you. Um, next, uh, we have ordinance 0361 20. I think we got to pass it. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Um, thank you. I now move for passage by voice. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bankston? Yes. Ms. Barosa de Padilla? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Favor? Abstain. Mr. Remy? Yes. President Hart? Yes. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0361 2023 to grant advance provisions of Section 3312.21D landscaping and screening, 3312.27 parking setback line, 3312.49 minimum number of parking spaces required, and 3333.18 building lines of Columbus City Codes for the property located at 2937 Courtright Road to permit a reduced development standards for apartment building in the LAR3 apartment residential district. The applicant is Hope and Heart Property Solutions, care of Jeff Brown, attorney. Proposed use of a single unit and multi unit residential. Development C's department rec recommendation is approval. Mid East Area Commission recommendation is also approval. Uh, I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the fines of staff and the fines of council. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Adopt it. Thank you. And finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, Council President. That's all we have in the zoning committee tonight. Is there a motion to adjourn? Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Dan Barosa D. Padilla, Brown, Dorrance, Favor, Remy, President Hart. Have a good evening, everyone.